Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. This is going to be another speed build. If you saw my previous video, that one right there, my goal there was to basically show that if you see a 3D model, something that's made for 3D printers and you want to make it out of regular material, you probably shouldn't let that stop you. It doesn't look exactly like the one and I didn't want it to, but you get the general idea. Uh, the gentleman that emailed me uh, pointed out a couple different things that he liked in that particular Kickstarter. And one of them is, uh, it was this uh, structure right here. I'm going to put a picture up. And as you can see, it's got a rectangular central portion and then some angled walls that break off uh, from it. It's a nice shape. It's an interesting looking structure. And it's definitely something that can be done without a 3D printer. How do I know this? Because I did it. Here it is. Here is my take on it, okay? Now granted, it's not as smooth and polished as a 3D printed model, but it will work. It's foam and chipboard, my standard go-to materials. And so in this video, I'm gonna take you to the desktop and I'm gonna show you how I made this. And then I'll go over at the end uh, some of the details and explain uh, my reasoning behind some of the choices I made here. So let's go to the tabletop and let's see how I made this. I started out by creating the base out of two pieces of half inch foam. Each piece was cut four inches by six inches. And I also cut side pieces that had a couple angles. Those were, uh, I cut those on my Proxon and everything was sort of wrapped in various lengths and widths of chipboard as you can see here. I just make a crease on the uh, chipboard with my blade and then glued it in. There's a top and a bottom and these are basically the foam pieces are just for strength for to give this structure uh, strength. Taped everything up and then I tackled the sides and again the sides are just nothing but angled pieces of foam wrapped also with chipboard. I made some angled cuts to give them a beveled look and once they were done uh, and tested on the side I cut thin pieces of chipboard and used hot glue to keep them in place. After the sides uh, were, were completed, I once again used hot glue to just attach them to the main base, as you can see here. Now, these things look very plain right now, but that's all going to change in just a second once I start adding panels and other greebles. So the first thing I did was I took more chipboard and I, I just cut random shapes, uh, angled cuts and things, and I pasted those onto the sides of the main structure, not the top of the uh, structure. And then I pulled out some of these wood bits. They're circles and rectangles and squares of all different sizes. And I just hot glued them randomly, except for on the sides. I tried to make the sides symmetrical or sort of a mirror appearance of one another, as you can see with all these uh, wooden pieces. And I added doors, of course. Everything was covered, not everything, most everything was covered with Mod Podge, black Mod Podge, mainly the foam. That was because I didn't need to paint the cardboard with the Mod Podge. It was, it's strong enough to, to support the spray paint. I gave it a good solid coat of white spray paint. Sorry for the blurriness here. And then once the, uh, the white dried, um, I covered everything in a very light gray coat. And after, while the, uh, while the gray paint was drying, I tackled uh, more of the little greebles that I would be adding to it. Here you can see I'm just cutting some granny grating and, and gluing it onto some black paper. I took some copper granny grating to create these sort of uh, solar panels. Uh, they're, they're very easy to make, but they just look so good. Um, very, very clean cut lines. I cut a piece of black granny, actually two pieces of black granny grating, and I glued them onto some sort of maroon purplish paper. I don't know what these are, I just they just looked good as a color. And then once the glue dried, I trimmed those up.
All right, as you can see here, I just did some uh, dry brushing to weather the gray. I used some darker gray and just dry brushed the whole thing. Then I started placing the little greebles that I'd created, just trying to see what looked good. Once I was happy with it, brought out the glue gun and just started attaching uh, everything in place. Uh, the blue squares on top, the little solar panel gri grids on the top. I added some doors and then cut some foam to make a frame around the door. And once that was done, it was just a matter of clean up, doing some odd little pieces just to make it look a little more detailed. So there you go. That is how I made what I'm calling the armory. Uh, at first, I thought it would be like a medical facility, but um, I don't know. In my mind's eye, it just looked sort of industrial. Uh, it looked like it would store weapons. I don't know. The main thing is it's not overly huge. It can be used as a piece of terrain on a science fiction tabletop, whether it's an RPG or a war game or anything like that. There's a lot of ways to tailor this to your needs, but this is a very basic armory or structure that I created. Now let me talk about real quick uh, some of the decisions I made. Now if you saw, if you watched the video and you saw some of the photos, um, I used chipboard for most of the structure. I, I, I cut a base of foam and then some side pieces that are in this shape right there. And then I sort of wrapped them with chipboard. Not hard, very quick. The entire structure minus all the doodads and stuff, it took uh, about 30 minutes, 32 minutes I think uh, is what I had recorded. So after that was done, then I started attaching the greeblies or greebles, you know, which is the, I, I had a lot of these little wooden pieces. Now granted, you can go buy bags of these at the hobby shops. They're a few dollars and you get dozens and dozens of different sizes and rectangles and circles. And these make perfect things for gluing onto the top uh, for, for adding depth. Um, these were made out of chipboard. You know, it, you, uh, uh, the structure would look very boring without all this other stuff on it. Now, you may notice there's a lot of colors. So what I did was I would glue a base piece down of, of say, a, a square wooden piece. I, I, I glued it on and then I painted all of the uh, structure a light gray before adding any of the colored elements or the grill work and stuff. That made the base. And then I painted these individual pieces again using these wooden wooden pieces and I glued them on top. And it gives them a raised appearance and it gives them a gray base. I don't know if you can see that. Beneath it, the colors are sharp. The edges are sharp. It doesn't look hand painted. You know, there's not mistakes. That's one of the reasons I chose to paint the individual wood pieces and then glue them on uh, after the whole thing was gray, uh, painted gray. Now for the grill works, uh, this is just granny grating. Again, this is inexpensive stuff. You can buy this at the hobby shop. I've not found it at Michael's. I may be wrong, maybe Michael's carries it now, but I did find it at Hobby Lobby. I don't remember, I wanna say it's close to a dollar a sheet. It may be a little more, or a little less, but you get a big sheet of it, and if you use, and you never wanna use this in large amounts. I mean, it would look kinda of weird, but you know, in the, in the small pieces I use, this will last a really long time. This color is sort of a tan, I have black, I have silver, I have bronze. Speaking of bronze, you can see that I use those right there. I made these, these are sort of like uh, solar panels. I, I, I glued a piece of black paper behind them, okay? And then I trimmed it and then I glued those on top of three, in this case, three of the little wooden uh, rectangles. It raises them up and it just gives it a, an unusual look. This one right here uh, is black brand, uh, granny, uh, granny grating, and I pasted it over a, a dark purple red, uh, you can't, really can't see it, uh, in the photos, I hope you'll see the detail, but painted it over and I, I pa pasted one there and pasted one there. And you may notice there's a symmetry to this on this piece and this piece up here, not here. Sometimes in my mind, sometimes symmetry is good and sometimes it's bad. I think um, in the real world, if you look at the top of buildings, things on top of a building are rarely centered. Air conditioning units are usually to one corner and duct work and all that kind of craziness. So sometimes you want to be careful with symmetry. But for these two side pieces, to me they looked like they were snapped on to this main structure, like they would be mass produced. And so I made them look the same. Um, they just, they're inverts of each other, inverses of each other. So I made sure that they were symmetrical. Okay, see how that works? Do, do. All in all, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's uh, it's not heavy at all, but it's heavy enough 
that it will sit and, and probably not move uh, unless it's really pushed. Again, total time here. By the time I finished gluing, painting all these extra bits on and stuff, it was still under two hours. And I'm telling you right now, that, uh, that structure, and I'm gonna put a picture up here again right here from the 3D model, that structure, if, if it's based on the size I think it is, that would easily take anywhere from three to five, maybe even more hours to 3D print. Two hours. Now granted, again, it's not as polished, it doesn't look as smooth as the 3D version, but it'll do in a pinch. And in the time it would take you to print one of those, you could probably make two of these. And again, if you don't have a 3D printer, there you go. Uh, you can duplicate that particular building pretty easy, uh, just right here. Before I close out, I wanna say a few things. Um, <laughs> you guys are killing me. I uh, I think in the last video I made a comment about, you know, if you have something or see something that you wanna, uh, a 3D model that you wanna see how it's done, let me know. Um, boy, I, sh I walked into that one. I have gotten a bunch of email requests <laughs> with pictures, with screenshots of different Kickstarters and some of the 3D models uh, that they are offering. Some of them are fantasy, most of them are science fiction, and I'm not sure why that is. Um, maybe it's because there's a lot of videos already on, on fantasy terrain making and maybe there's not enough on science fiction. I appreciate those of you who emailed me and said, hey, take a look at this one, I dare you tackle that. You know, dares don't work, <laughs> but some of them are really interesting that you guys sent. and. I, it's almost calling to me that I really need to try to recreate those using standard materials instead of 3D printing. So, please keep them coming. I make no promises that if you email me a photo and say, hey, can you duplicate this, that I'll be able to, because right now I've got enough to go for months. That's how many I've been emailed. There are some favorites that I've picked out. There are some that I was like, you know what, that's, that's doable, and, and there's not much I could add to it. Uh, the video that I just posted plus this one, um, there's enough information there on how you could probably figure out how I would recreate some of these. So I'm glad you guys are liking these speed builds. I've had a lot of positive comments about them uh, in, in the uh, previous video and through some emails that you've sent me. I'm glad you like this stuff. I'm happy to return to standard crafting uh, and, and reducing the 3D printer. That said, I still rely on my 3D printer. It's a, you know, it's it's a go-to for me and it, it can do some really interesting things that I cannot do in foam or chipboard. But if that's what you guys are wanting more of, I will certainly take that under consideration and try my best to add more standard crafting terrain in the future. But again, thank you for those of you who've contacted me and, and uh, told me that you liked the previous video and I hope you like this one as well. And to the gentleman who requested this one, there you go, two, two models, 3D models, recreated with foam and chipboard. You can do it, give it a shot, and uh, I'd like to see what you guys, all of you, if you duplicate something like this, I'd love to see what you come up with. All right, this is DM Jim, I'll see you in the next episode.